The second day of jury selection got off to a slow start today. First, they moved to another courtroom, then they had to swear in potential jurors. Celestine's election represents the winds of change here in North Miami. The crime scene is still active here at the Connolly House. Crime scene investigators looking for any evidence they can. Some other names being kicked around in the race for governor, former Congressman Bill McBride and Bob Butterworth. In Miami Beach, Suzanne Stevens, CBS4 News Tonight. Celestine isn't the only first black mayor of North Miami. He's also the first to receive death threats. But he tells me he's not going to be scared by a few of what he calls cowards. We're, we're going to hang you. Negro, go back home. And uh, we're going to F you. Just a few explicit examples of some of the 19 harassing phone calls North Miami Mayor-elect Joe Celestine, a Haitian-American, has received since Tuesday's election. His win over Arthur Sori, an African-American, was clearly divided in black and white. Sori winning in white neighborhoods, Celestine in black. And I campaigned in, in Keystone and they let the dogs out after me. I went to a house in San Susi, they played Dixie for me. So... <laughs> All you have to do is take a walk down North Miami's wall of former mayors to get the picture. It shows even a woman was elected 10 years before a black man. Celestine's election represents the winds of change here in North Miami, with the black population more than doubling in the last four years to 55 percent. Not everyone is welcoming him with open arms. I think it's an opportunity that has yet to be happening in Dade County and across the nation. We all should be colorblind. Celestine, before being a Haitian, appeared as a newcomer, you know, a new wave of immigrants. He could have been a Mexican, he could have been a Cuban. I refuse to believe that the callers may not even be from North Miami. Because North Miami citizens, they're, they're loving, they're wonderful people. Celestine will be sworn in on Tuesday, and he tells me the ceremony has been moved to the armory instead of City Hall to accommodate the expected large crowd in North Miami. Suzanne Stevens, CBS4 News. Right here was the door in the head. Not this part down right here. Eight-year-old Markeisha Bow recalls how two masked gunmen ransacked her house. After holding her and her mother at gunpoint in the driveway, the men pushed them into this bedroom where Markeisha's grandmother was sleeping. He say, uh, this ain't no joke. He said, get up and give me the money. While all of this was going on inside, next door, 10-year-old Monique Sheffield was watching the gunman carefully. He had his hand over Markeisha mama mouth. So Monique told her grandmother, who dialed 911. Mr. Grandchild, give you a description of the person? I don't know. Monique, come here. Who was it, a man or a woman? Two men. Two men. And was it a woman that they were pushing in or another man? A woman they were pushing in with something over their face. They were wearing something over their face? Yeah. Meantime, the gunmen got the money they were after in a safe under a bed and made their getaway out a back door. But thanks to this four-foot hero, police caught them not far away. Alice Williams has nothing but thanks for this pint-sized private eye. I told her I got to get her something. Is there something you want? Did, did you say something you want? Yes. What do you want? A scooter. A scooter. A small price to pay for a good deed. Police say they may also reward Monique at an upcoming awards ceremony. We'll keep you posted at the Miami-Dade Police Department. Suzanne Stevens, CBS4 this morning. The second day of jury selection got off to a slow start today. First, they moved to another courtroom. Then they had to swear in potential jurors. But any way you look at it, the defense has its work cut out. I know you told the, all the jurors, all my group that came in about, um, you know, not saying anything, don't no watch TV. I think personally that is like taking a kid to the toy store and saying, okay, don't touch anything. The revelation that potential jurors were talking about the case after they were ordered not to left a bad taste in the judge's mouth and the defense asking for another change of venue. I can't imagine a jury in Broward County based on just what we've heard in this courtroom in, in the past 24 hours, Judge, giving this man the benefit of the doubt. My opinion is that he was guilty and did the crime. Defendant David Farrell listened as most every potential juror talked about his case. Accusations he was drunk and driving the wrong way on 95 when he hit a car driven by Maurice Williams and Craig Chambers who died at the scene. Only one potential juror out of a hundred knew nothing about this case and the other jurors made it clear he was in the minority. I was a little upset about the fact that they were calling me stupid because I had not heard about this case. All of this weighing on the judge to make a change of venue decision. It's all cumulative, and um, I, we'll see if well, we meet the straw that breaks the camel's back.
Late this afternoon, the judge said he's going to subpoena all of the potential jurors that were seen after 530 yesterday to see what they talked about amongst themselves and how it could impact this case potentially. Also, he's left the door wide open for a possible change in venue. At the Broward County Courthouse, Suzanne Stevens, CBS 4 News. Crime scene is still active here at the Connolly House. Crime scene investigators looking for any evidence they can, fingerprints, blood samples. Meantime, two of the suspects are being questioned by local authorities in New York City as we speak. Charles Conley's longtime girlfriend says she's relieved two of the suspects in her boyfriend's murder are behind bars tonight. 23-year-old Anthony Bryan and 25-year-old Tyrone Blash were picked up in New York last night on a traffic violation driving Conley's stolen Toyota. They were giving them bogus names, giving them a hard time. We know that these individuals have several different aliases. 18-year-old Tanisha Cannon, who's still on the loose. I don't see why anybody would want to hurt him. If you needed a ride, he would offer his car. Police say it's that trusting nature that may have gotten Conley killed. Anthony Bryan is a distant cousin of Conley's, so Conley recently took the three in, giving them free food, lodging, and use of his two cars. But when Conley didn't show up for his job this weekend, his girlfriend, Maggie Augustine, went to his home and wasn't prepared for what she found. The house was in a mess. I mean, it was in a mess. And like I said, we just saw his feet tied up and we didn't back down. Police won't say how Conley died, but Augustine says his feet were bound with a television cord and he was lying in a pool of blood. His house guests and two cars nowhere to be found. And now that police think they've found two of the suspects, their job has just begun. Detectives are there in New York. They're questioning these individuals. And what we're hoping for is to be able to charge them with the South Florida murder. The three suspects are also wanted in connection with two other crimes, a murder in Connecticut and an attempted murder in New York City, something Conley's family and friends say he knew nothing about. In Oakland Park, Suzanne Stevens, CBS 4 News. I intend to run for re-election. Governor Bush made the announcement to a small crowd of reporters at Coral Park Elementary today, but the impact was felt statewide. A lot of people have been praying for rain in Florida. A lot of Republicans have been praying for the governor announced for his re-election. While Republicans rejoice, Democrats are busy getting their ducks in a row. With names like former Attorney General Janet Reno and U.S. Ambassador to Vietnam Pete Peterson, Bush will get a run for his money. In fact, according to a recent Miami Herald poll, Bush is only seven points ahead of Reno, and she's only hinted at running. Yeah. Polls don't vote, and if polls voted, Gore would have been president of the United States. National Democratic activist Gus Garcia does not believe Reno's a good choice because of her political baggage, like the seizure of Elian Gonzalez. Garcia likes Peterson, a relatively unknown face in Florida. There's an old Spanish saying, better he not known than him bad known. Whomever decides to take their chances against Bush, the governor says, bring it on. Do it like they do in the, in the United Kingdom, you know, where they call the election, just do it in six weeks, I'm ready. <laughs> Some other names being kicked around in the race for governor, former Congressman Bill McBride and Bob Butterworth. In Miami Beach, Suzanne Stevens, CBS 4 News Tonight. This is PBF News Now. Good evening. I'm Suzanne Stevens. Jim Wicks has the evening off. We'll have more on that traffic tie-up in Jupiter in just a moment. But first, we have some leg-breaking details in the murder investigation of a Port St. Lucie woman. On Tuesday, Bernice Palaquin was found stabbed to death in her Port St. Lucie home. At this hour, police are searching another home in St. Lucie County where a known fugitive from Wisconsin was living. Today, police arrested the man on a domestic battery warrant, and they are investigating any connection he might have to the Palaquin murder. We do have a crew on their way to Port St. Lucie right now. We'll have the latest on this story for you at 11 o'clock. Patience wanes, tempers flare as bulldozers take over a major intersection and beach access in Jupiter. If you made it around the area of Indian Town Road and US-1, you know what we're talking about. Businesses and residents have suffered through construction in the area close to two years now. While many view it as the cost of progress, others find it too much to bear. PBF News' Diana Lynn shows you why. In Delray Beach, a car and truck collide in the southbound lane of I-95, just south of Linton Boulevard. One person was seriously injured. Two others were taken to the hospital with only minor injuries. A quick lane change caused both vehicles to spin out of control. Police in Miami investigating the alleged drowning death of a two-year-old boy are now filing abuse charges against the boy's guardians. 44-year-old Wanda Gent and 24-year-old Deanna Brown told police the toddler drowned in a bathtub 
but police say the child died from severe beatings. The women have been charged with child abuse, but have not yet been charged with the boy's death. The women cared for seven other children in a three-bedroom house in the area. Police say the two also allegedly beat those other children. In New York City, a second police officer is indicted tonight for allegedly torturing a Haitian immigrant. Officer Charles Schwartz turned himself into the Internal Affairs Department last night. His charges have not been released. However, Officer Justin Volp is charged with sodomizing Abner Luima with a plunger in a station bathroom. Today, a very angry Haitian community took to the streets protesting the alleged torture. New York's mayor says police cooperation is helping Helping the investigation. Specific details of the indictments will be released next week. Several other officers are also under investigation. Still striking, but also still talking. That's the word from both sides of the UPS strike now at its 13th day. The Teamsters and officials from UPS met well into the morning, taking several short breaks to rest, but then coming back to the bargaining table. Things still don't look too good. Last word from the negotiations came yesterday from Teamster President Ron Carey. He says both sides are no closer to an agreement than they were last Thursday. There will be no strike at two General Motors transmission plants in Michigan. Word came early this morning that GM and the United Auto Workers tentatively agreed to new contracts for 5,200 hourly workers. The strike would have shut down a critical plant for GM production, in effect shutting down all of GM's other North American plants. The workers will vote on the new contract this week. Government safety inspectors have their eye on one of Ford Motors' most popular vehicles tonight, the Explorer. Reportedly, there have been dozens of complaints about the sunroofs flying off or shattering. Nineteen people have been injured in accidents involving Explorer sunroofs. Earlier, Ford said the problem might be due to owner error. All the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. Today, residents of Green Acres celebrated a relatively new strategy to help raise their children. Community policing. Six months ago, the local police force teamed up with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office to set up the program. At the hub is this community center where children participate in activities. These youngsters demonstrate the skills they've learned from karate instruction funded by the Police Athletic League. That's 10 minutes of nonstop PBF news, but we aren't done yet. It's been two decades since the king of rock and roll died. From Graceland around the world, hundreds of thousands are remembering Elvis Presley. And it's a perfect mission for the Space Shuttle Columbia, but now without some tricky maneuvering. You're watching PBF News at 630.